talking about 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 to 8 at the moment. <clears throat> We're talking about the fact that you can trust in the Word of God and you can trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a good place to put your faith. Jesus Christ is a good place to put your belief. Okay? And so Paul is saying that there are hundreds at the time of this writing, hundreds of witnesses to the resurrection. Hundreds of people who are walking around who saw the risen Jesus Christ. No doubt those people are talking about what they have seen. A man who everybody knew was dead is now alive or was walking around among us for 40 days and we saw him before he ascended to heaven. When we studied the book of James, one of the things that we dealt with at length that I know you all remember was how was it that this man who was so antagonistic to Christ during his earthly ministry, and we know that because of passages like John chapter 7, where it says that his brothers knew that his life was in danger and yet they were sending him into harm's way. How is it that this man later on becomes such a passionate follower of Christ, becomes such a, a passionate follower that he is bishop of the church in Jerusalem? This man, this same half-brother, it is because the risen Christ appeared to him. And Paul is stating that here, that he appeared to James. The writers understood which James it was. The readers, I'm sorry, the initial readers of this letter knew exactly which James this was. This was the bishop. And here it is that the bishop's half-brother, who is also God of the universe, appeared to him after his resurrection. And then, at the last, he puts his own testimony in there. He also appeared to me as to one abnormally born. In other words, one who doesn't belong. He appeared to me. So I know for sure that what I'm talking about is true. People don't want to acknowledge, and yet it's hard for them to understand how these men and, and men and women willingly went to their deaths, never refuting what they had seen and what they had heard. They never did. Being crucified upside down, thrown off of buildings, run through with spears, drawn and quartered, burned alive, when they could have just recanted. But the fact is, they couldn't recant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Everything hinges on the resurrection. Everything hinges on the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 12 to 19. Excuse me. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection from the dead? But if there is no resurrection from the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation is without foundation, and so is your faith. Verse 15, in addition, if we are found to be false witnesses about God because we have testified about God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead are not raised. So what is he saying? We are either crazy or testifying falsely about God. Because remember, the, the Pharisees believed in resurrection, the Sadducees did not. There were people who came into the circle, the, 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 the body of Christ, who had different types of beliefs. We know that from reading 1 Corinthians like we are now. In addition, starting again at verse 15, we are found to be false witnesses about God. We have lied on God because we've testified about God that he raised up Christ whom he did not raise up if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You're still in your sins. Yeah. What is the proof that our sins are forgiven 
the resurrection of Christ. We see that early on in his ministry where the paralytic is lowered through the roof and he heals him. But before he heals him, he says, son, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees are like, well, who would think he is that he can forgive sins? And he says, so that you will know that the Son of Man has the power to forgive sins. Take up your better walk. What's the point? If I can heal a broken body, if I have the power to do, to change the very physical nature of a human being, how hard is it for me to change their spiritual nature as well? How hard is it for me to wipe the slate clean? Amen. Verse 18, therefore, those who have fallen asleep in Christ have also perished. If we've put our hope in Christ for this life only, we should be pitied more than anyone. So those people who went to their death holding fast to their faith in Christ died for nothing if there's no resurrection. Those people who were garden torches in, in the Roman gardens where they were, they were covered in tar, while alive, and then lit on fire and burned <clears throat> to give light, okay? Those people died for nothing. If there's no resurrection. Those people who died in Lahore a little while ago in Pakistan died for nothing if there's no resurrection. That can't be true, all right? Charles Spurgeon said, our religion is not based on opinions, but upon facts. We hear persons sometimes saying, quote, those are your views and these are ours, unquote. Whatever your views may be is a small matter. What are the facts of the case? We must, after all, if we want a firm foundation, come down to matters of fact. Now, the great facts of the gospel are that God was incarnate in Jesus Christ, that he lived here a life of holiness and love, that he died upon the cross for our sins, and that he was buried in the tomb of Joseph, and that the third day he rose again from where, from the dead, excuse me, that after a while he ascended to his father's throne where he now sits, and that he shall come by and by to be our judge, and in that day the dead in Christ shall rise by virtue of their union with him. It sounds like the Apostles' Creed. Yeah. Which we affirm to be true.